Hello, buddy, DK Gillespie here, and welcome to my review, not unboxing, of the Medicom Real Action Heroes Ryuko Matoi from Kill a Kill, 1 6 scale Ryuko Matoi, I forgot to say. And this figure, okay, before I get into this, I need to say something real quick. This figure, I've already, I've had for a little bit now. I actually, she's already out of the box. This is not an unboxing. This box is actually empty, which I will show you in just a second here. But I am just gonna tell you right now that I absolutely fucking adore this figure. I love this figure so much, and it is solely because of the character and the source material. I, the, the, the figure itself is really great, and I will talk about it a lot in this, but just know that when I'm inevitably gushing about this figure, it's because I love this character, and I love this show so much. This is my favorite show of all time, and she is my favorite character from the show. She's one of my favorite fantasy characters of all time, and I have always wanted a figure of her, and now that I finally have one, I am so unbelievably happy that I have one, and this figure is quite impressive on its own, so, uh, let's, let's take a look at this box real quick this gorgeous box man it's so beautiful so this thing is fucking massive so i might have to get in front of the camera here so we have an amazing picture of the figure up front we have kill a kill right there i assume this says ryuko mod toy with uh senkets right there real action heroes on this side we have a beautiful picture of the figure right there react real action heroes kill a kill on the back we have an awesome picture of ryuko mod toy right there a bunch of stuff this sticker is to show that it is authentic so if you get this and it doesn't have the sticker uh, i'm not saying that that means it's not a official thing i i don't, I'm actually not aware if there is actually even a, an unofficial a version of this figure, so I don't know. Do with that information what you will. And on this last side, we have another awesome picture of Ryuko right there. Kill a kill reaction heroes. And this in uh, works like a uh, NECA ultimate box. You open it up, you have the figure right there. You have an awesome picture of Ryuko real action heroes. And as I already told you, she is already out of the packaging here. And uh, yeah, this box is glorious. I absolutely love it. I love the packaging, but uh, let's bring in the figure here. And here we have Ryuko out of the packaging, even though she wasn't even in there at the beginning. And like I've already said, I absolutely love this figure because I love this character and I love the source material that she's from. But uh, before I just start gushing about how much I love Kill a Kill in this character, let's get in here close on all the features and the uh, the details of the figure here. So let's just do the basic review thing first. So starting off with her gorgeous, gorgeous head, and it is just absolutely phenomenal. Pretty much a dead-on likeness to the character in the show. I love the way the eyes look. The mouth is real the, the mouth looks really good as well. She's got that serious, stern look on her face that she has for so much in Kill a Kill. Uh, this character is never doesn't really fuck around in the show. So I really like that they gave her this serious face. And they do give her an alternate face as well, which we'll talk about in the accessories. And uh, yeah, she just looks absolutely phenomenal. The horns and the hair right there. And moving down to Senkets, who came out just absolutely wonderfully. You have the eye for Senkets right here. And his scarred eye on the other side. You have his teeth, the gums right there. The gums are made out of a nice little uh, pliable plastic. And uh, yes, I'm not going to talk too much about her outfit, but yeah, her outfit, it's, uh, it's, it's quite a lot to look at, but it's all, it all has a point in the show. I'm not saying that that's, uh, that it's not, like, devoid of being very much a fan service outfit, but I mean, come on, it's an anime. What do you, what, what do you expect? Uh, but yeah, I re I really love how they've done Senkets here. The teeth looks, uh, the teeth look very good. The arms here is actually, this is actually really cool. The arms are actually made, these are, this is actually cloth on the arms here. It's very tight to the body, too. But it is cloth, and it does, like, bend, which we will talk about a little bit more in the articulation. But, yeah, it's really, really nicely done, as you can see here. It is cloth, and it looks really, really good. The hands are plastic, though, These little and these little pieces right here are plastic. Oh, yeah, that's that's one thing we're going to bring up with this figure is the uh, is that, that issue, but we'll talk about that a little bit more later on in the video. But, yeah, the hands are really nice, down to the to the, the Sekiteko down there. looks really, really, really good. And then moving down to the skirt, you've got all the spikes right there. And, uh, yeah, her, arm, her hand keeps falling off well i will bring that up in a in, when we get to it but actually you know what let's bring it up right now yeah the hand the, the hand just keeps falling off We'll just leave it off for now, but we're going to spin her around and take a look at her back, and we have her jets right there looking really cool. You don't get any particle effects for the jets, which would have been a really cool accessory to get, but you do have the jets back there looking really, really good. The uh, the back part, this piece is just a little bit off-centered. It doesn't really bother me at all because it's it's on the back, so it doesn't really bother me, but uh, yeah, that piece goes down, and then the skirt with the rest of the spikes right there, and then we'll turn it back around and take a look at the legs. 
and you have the beautiful legs look really really nice here cool little spike detail right there the red going up there trying to, to uh, go along with the rest of Senkets up here and then once again this is all made of fabric you can even see the stitching or the sewing I guess right there along the seam right there so very very nice and then the feet once again all this is uh, is fabric and then this piece the red piece at the bottom here is actually uh, is plastic but yeah, in my opinion, the figure just looks absolutely fantastic. But one thing that I do want to briefly uh, touch on real quick is that on camera, she looks really blue. Um, and this is, I'm guessing this is just a problem with the camera because I realized this when I, before I bought this figure, I watched review, I watched some reviews on YouTube. And yeah, the Senkets looks blue, uh, on, in the, when she's on the camera. Now, when she's in like the, the lights I have here, cause I have two lights right here surround, uh, bl blaring lights on the figure. And yeah, when she's super bright in this light, it does look like Senkets is blue when he is, he's, for all, he's, he's black. He's black. Let's, let's be real. Here. If you've seen Kill a Kill, Senkets is black. So uh, I just wanted to bring that up real quick. I actually don't have much of an issue with it because when it's not in this blazing light, it look it, it honestly looks completely fine. It doesn't really uh, it doesn't really bother me whatsoever. But it's definitely something worth noting uh, worth noting briefly. So with that being said, let's get to the accessories. Alrighty, so accessories. This this figure has such cool accessories and so many actually really really uh, cool and fun gimmicks to her. The first thing we're going to talk about is the alternate face here. So you get an alternate face, but you'll notice that the alternate face doesn't have eyes. We're going to talk about that in a second, but real quick, I do just want to say yes, it's a screaming face, very much uh, in character for Ryuko Matoi. I really love the way this came out. It looks just as good as the stern face, in my opinion. It just, yeah, it looks, it looks really great. Now, the reason it doesn't have eyes is because this is such a cool gimmick. This is one of my favorite things about this figure. You get three sets of eyes with this figure. You get the one that she has right now is just the, the standard looking forward eyes, but you also get these eyes, which are looking off to this direction just ever so slightly, as you can see there. So if you put these in here, and you can use these with either of the faces, you can have her looking in this direction right there, which is really, really, really cool. That is such a cool idea that I don't, that I, I've never seen used before, so I really love that. So now she can be looking this way, and she also comes with this. This face, the eyes are a little bit harder to pop out. They're really easy to pop out on that one, which I'll, which I'll show in just a second. And you also get this other pair of eyes, which is looking up slightly, so she can yell at Satsuki from the uh, the bottom of the ground on Hin of uh, of Hanoji Academy right there. So you can use any three of these eyes you want in any uh, with any, in any combo here. You can use these eyes. In that has in that phase scope, or you can use them in this, which I will show you right now. Okay, so the way this works is we bring in Ryuko here. We can take this little segment of her hair off right here. So this piece comes off. I apologize. I apologize, Ryuko. I'm gonna just uh, black mask you real quick. <laughs> We're gonna take her phase off, and just so we don't have to look at that, we're gonna just move her out of here for a second. All right, so. Here we have the regular face, and just like I said before, you can take the eyes out of here, and you can use any number of eyes that you want in here. So you can have, so one of the best, one of the things I like to do, I actually, I pose this figure quite a bit already, uh, but this, this combination, looks, it looks really cool, because you have her starting, you have her looking this way, or you can use the one that is looking up slightly, which is kind of hard to tell if it's, uh, which one it is, I think it's this one though, yeah, this one. No, I can't. It's really hard to tell. <laughs> really hard to tell which one is the one that's uh, that's looking up. I think this one's actually looking straight ahead. Where, this is, it must be this one then. Yeah, this one's looking up. So you have the one looking up right there. That one's really cool as well. So we'll bring it back in Ryuko here, and we will swap on, and we will swap these faces real quick. So we're gonna give her the screaming head, and let's just give her the standard straight ahead. Look right there, and you pop that on, and then you take her hair, pop that back on, and there you go. Now she's screaming, probably at Sasuke, probably calling her a bitch, or telling one of the Elite Four to blow it out your ass. <laughs> That's just what I assume she's probably yelling about, but... Yeah, that looks absolutely fantastic. I love the way this head sculpt looks getting in here close on that. That just looks so fantastic, man. I love, I love this figure so much, man. So, yeah, that, that just looks absolutely fantastic. I love the way that this looks. So, yeah, I really, really, really love this screaming head sculpt. And you can get some really great poses with this. Um, well, 
Okay, well, I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. I'll, I'll touch upon that more in a second. Why I, I hesitated when I said po uh, when I said you can get her into a lot of great poses, but this this allows you to get some really 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 cool looks for the figure. So I really really love that, and I love the eye switching gimmick. That was a very cool idea. I love that the idea you can like have her looking off to the side or looking up. It's just that's a very 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 cool idea. Alrighty, next up we of course get Ryuko's scissor blade right here looking very 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 nice I love the way this came out It's flat actually on this side which is kind of weird because I don't I don't know if uh, if they made another um, I know that there is a real action hero Satsuki as well uh, but I don't actually think she comes with like the other half of the uh, of the scissor blades here so I don't really, really know why they made this flat maybe they just did it uh, maybe they just did it in case they wanted to do it at some point in the future but still I mean it looks fantastic I love the way it looks you have the uh, the holes right there and the thing around there so yeah really 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 cool it doesn't unfold or anything like that but you get an unfolded one as well so you get the handle folded out and the blade flips out right there so you can have her have her scissor blade in decapitation mode right there so she can send associates some motherfuckers right there and it looks fantastic i absolutely freaking love the way this looks this is so cool it's absolutely huge too like compare it to the size of the figure man it's really really big and really really cool so i love the way that this looks now for her to hold these, you have to switch her hands. Now, for her hands, you get a bunch of options. She comes with the fisted hands on in the packaging, but you also get two splayed out hands right here. And the hands are really easy to swap, which I really, really like about this figure. Although it also is also kind of a, a bad thing because the hands like because the hands are really easy to take out, but it's also a good thing because the hands are really easy to take out. I mean, yeah. Uh, so yeah, switching the hands is really, really easy because the pegs just they just go in and they just come right back out. So yeah, I really, really like uh, like the, the hand swapping. Although as you saw earlier in the video, the hand kind of kept falling out. So it's both a really it's it's both a, a plus and a minus, but you you swift you can switch your hands out and you get these hands with uh, which are the grabby hands so she can hold her scissor blade right there and we will go ahead and show that off so we'll give her this hand we'll take the scissor blade and the fingers are just rubbery so you can just take the scissor blade and push it in there really really easily and then you can swap the hand out and there you go now Ryuko has her scissor blade oh I love this figure so much oh god it's it's really just because it's Ryugo that I love this figure so much, but Jesus, I love this figure. Uh, but yeah, there you have her with her scissor blade right there, which is so very cool. And you can do the same thing with the uh, with the decapitation mode scissor blade as well, which I will show off when I do the showcase when I show off some poses. So uh, yes, there you have it. Those are your accessories. Okay, now we're going to talk about some issues with this figure, and that is the articulation. The articulation for this figure is very... Very finicky and very wonky, and I'm. It's it's also not very good. You can't really get her into a lot of really cool action poses. But at the end of the day, it's a one six scale figure. So did, if you expected to be able to get her in really cool action poses easily anyway, then I don't. Th I think you might have had your hopes up a little bit too high there. Um, also, the the issue with with stuff like this is similar to the the argument with Hot Toys because she has this fabric here. If you leave her posed in in a in a pose where her arms or her knees are bent, then she might, then the, 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 the fabric might actually rip over the course of time, which is not something that I want to deal with. Also, the neck as well is also that, uh, that fabric, although I don't really see how that could be an issue because you can't, you can't bend the neck. But if you leave those bent, just like Hot Toys, um, well, obviously I don't, I don't, I don't know for sure because I've never had a Hot Toy, but I've heard that you can't leave Hot Toys, uh, like, like, posed like that for a long period of time because it can actually mess up the figure. So that is something to keep in mind. However, the the articulation she does have a really good range of movement at the head here uh her hair is very very crazy so it does kind of inhibit it a little bit but honestly yeah you can get some really great movement with the head here if you give her the the looking up eyes it looks really cool when you bend her head down like that because she's like really really you're gonna fuck you're gonna fuck with me really yeah so really really cool there well i'll show a couple i'll show a couple i'll show a ton of poses off when i get to the showcase right here i've already had so much fun posing this figure i'm going to have so much more when i get to the showcase because i just love 
I love this figure so much. But uh, yes, the posing is really good in the head. The arms are the scary part for me. So I don't. I'm not. I'm honestly. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fuck with it too much. Okay. Um, I want to show you guys the articulation, but the arms honestly kind of scare me because if I break this figure, I'll be the saddest man ever. Uh, but the arms they can go out like that, and they can do a 360. But it, I just feel a lot of resistance up here. I apologize for you. Go. I'm sorry for that touch. Um, it was an accident. I swear. Please don't kill me. Uh, but yes, the the the. What I'm trying to say here, yes, there, I feel a lot of resistance here because of the fabric, and it's as I'm not. I, I don't want to make that seem like I'm like have a, I have a huge issue with it because it's kind of to be expected and understood, but still, it's definitely present and it's definitely worth pointing out. So I'm not going to push this too far because if I break this, I will be just the saddest man. So, uh, yeah, and then the same kind of goes with the uh, with the elbows here too, it, because of the fabric you're really limited. You can get a good moment, but as you can see, she keeps wanting to fight it, the resistance, and of course, if you do leave it in that pose for too long, it might fuck that up. I'm not saying it 100% will fuck that up. I don't know for sure, but I have a feeling that it might fuck that up in this, and you might start seeing like like holes or tears in there, so I wouldn't recommend doing it is what I'm saying. This piece right here, uh, is the piece of the Sekiteko right here is kind of loose right there. It is on the other side as well, so not, not a complaint or anything, just pointing it out. The arm, the hands, the hands have a hinge system, which we're going to uh, remove to talk about a little bit here. So the hands have a hinge system right here. I apologize for the lighting here. Here we go. So the hands here, they have a hinge system right here, a super long peg, by the way. And basically, I apologize for the camera there, but uh, yes, you see the hinge here. It can go up, it can go down if you have it on her, and you can also rotate the peg and you can have it go side to side as well. So you can do quite a bit with this, which is really helpful for getting her in some really cool uh, scissor blade poses. You can you can angle it up so you can like, try, uh, which helps get it her over get it over her shoulder, uh, which I'll show off in the showcase. And you also can angle it down when you want to have her just resting it at her side right there, which is really really cool. Now the torso, I apologize, Rio. I'm gonna do my best to not. Anyway, uh, but yes, the, the, the torso can go down about that far, but a similar thing with the fabric. Once again, I'm not going to 100% tell you that if you bend it, it will break over the course of time, but... It's definitely something that I want to point out because I would be afraid to leave it in that pose for that exact reason because if that rips that would just absolutely suck if this cuz cuz this is like this the, the the torso here is like a a kind of squishy plastic here and same with the uh the gum, with Senkets's gums right here it's it's very it's very uh, squishy plastic. It almost feels like like a balloon or something. So, yeah, it's just it's just worth pointing out right there. So don't I wouldn't leave her curled down for a long period of time is what I'm trying to say. Now the legs it can go forward that far. You can actually get a lot of movement in the legs here, but the knees are kind of hindered. But you can go that far back right there. And if you move uh, and if you move down here, you got a nice uh, swivel right there at the, uh, the a leg there. But that is another thing. If you see there. The, the, the leg does come out. It's no big deal because you literally just pop it right back in and boom, you're good to go. It's not a big deal. It doesn't like come out on its own. So I've never had that happen. So it, I honestly, it, I'm not even going to count that as a complaint. It's, it's, I have no problem with it. It's completely fine. Uh, and then the knees, they can bend, but once again, the exact same argument with the, with the elbows, just be careful because you don't want that to, to, uh, you don't want that to become a problem. You don't want to see like tears or, or holes in there. So I would just be very careful with it is all. And then the, the feet, right here as you can see one thing that's really amazing about this figure is you can't even see the joints because all the fabric is covering the joints but it's also a problem because if you leave them in the pose obviously once again i've said like a million times already but if you leave her in the pose it could it could you could have problems in the future which is so it's both a, a blessing and a curse at the same time and then the feet you can also get some nice movement here it has a little bit of hinge and but once again exact same thing here also does have some pivot right there so you can get some cool action poses which i will definitely try and get some really cool action poses i haven't i haven't pushed the envelope too much with this figure yet, but I'm probably going to uh, to try and get some cool stuff for the showcase here. So, uh, yeah, that is that. But real quick, we are going to do a couple comparisons here. Okay, one more thing I forgot to say during the accessories, I deeply apologize for this, is she comes with a stand right here. Very nice stand. Uh, she has no problem standing up on her own, but I have been having her on the stand just in case, because if she falls over, because I don't want there to be any hope of her falling over and breaking, so, uh, the, she stands up completely fine on her own. You can even see him, I can knock the table, and yeah, she stands up completely fine on her own. She has a nice, uh, a nice stance, but, uh, you know, the stand is, is very appreciated. I do appreciate the stand, because I am gonna have, because I do want to have her on the stand, because 
because, uh, yeah, but you don't have to if you don't want to. She stands perfectly fine. But the sand is really nice, though. Uh, it is a nice plastic, and then you have some joints right here. Very nice. The claw just kind of grips the torso, and yeah, it's a nice stand, so that is another thing that it includes. Okay, so for comparison, here is my 1-6 scale Walking Dead Rick Grimes. So you can see that, yeah, she's 1-6 scale. This is a 1-6 scale figure, and... Yeah, there you go. Uh, this is the only other 1-6 scale figure I have, so I apologize. This will be the only 1-6 scale comparison I uh, I have here. But, yeah, that's uh, that's a pretty good gist. I mean, this Rick Grimes is, is it's a standard 1-6 scale figure. So, uh, but, yeah, as you can see... Yeah, she's she's very big. <laughs> this I mean, one six scale figure. She's very tall. I didn't mean that as an insult, Ryuko. I'm I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> anyway, but yeah, there you have that comparison. Uh, obviously, not really relevant at all, but it's the only one six scale figure I have to compare it with. So. And here it is with the uh, complete Kill a Kill box set on Blu-ray, because, eh, I don't know, <laughs> maybe you want to put it in front of your of your Kill a Kill box set. So, there you go. There's a nice little size reference, if, if that's helpful at all. <laughs> here she is with a scissor blade. <laughs> why not? <laughs> and why not Newies as well? <laughs> this is the dumbest comparison ever, but there you go. <laughs> I don't have a Bakus on, sorry. And here she is with a standard 7-inch scale figure, uh, NECA Michael Myers. And here she also is with a standard 6-inch uh, scale figure, the uh, amazing Yamaguchi Harley Quinn right there. So yeah, that's, so yeah, just a standard 6-inch uh, just a standard 6-inch uh, scale figure. Alrighty, now for our showcase. And there we have it. Alrighty, guys. So, I absolutely love this figure, and of course I love it. It's a 1-6 scale Ryuko Matoi from Kill a Kill, my favorite TV show of all time. How could I not love this thing? My favorite TV show, my favorite character from that show. I, I of course I love this thing. If I were to give this a personal rating, it would be a 10 out of 10. If you love Ryuko half as, even half as much as I do, a hundred percent get this figure. It is fucking fantastic. However, I am not going to go, I'm not going to not point out that this figure has, that this figure is not perfect because the articulation and the posability is extremely limited, but honestly, Ryuko looks badass just standing there with her scissor blade looking at you with this, um, with this awesome face sculpt. Th this, I love this figure to no end, and if you really, and if you get her, honestly, the fact that you can't really achieve all that many really cool action poses, I don't really feel is the point of this figure, it really is just to stand and there and look awesome have her in a have her in kind of a uh, a more relaxed pose and just and just admire her beauty because she is absolutely stunning on the shelf. I love this figure so much. Uh, the articulation is obviously the biggest issue I have with the figure, but a couple other smaller issues is sometimes is the hands like to fall out really easily, and sometimes when you pull the hands out, you you might get this situation where this piece. Oh shit! I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, sorry about that. Anyway, uh, you might get this this situation where this little peg stays in the wrist, and then at the end you have the hand out like this. Now it's a really easy fix. All you need to do is grab some pliers and grab the nub and just pull it right out. It's happened to me countless times, and it, this has worked to get it out every single time. It's really not that big a deal, but it's definitely worth pointing out. And now we get to the big reason why I hesitate to give this figure as a whole a ten out of ten. Because while I want to give it a ten out of ten, there is one issue issue with me giving it a 10 out of 10, and that is the price. Now, if you can find this thing for a really good price, like under $200, 100% get it. It is incredible. But 
if not, you really need to weigh, if you, if you have to pay more than $200, you really need to weigh how much you want it. I will tell you straight up, I paid a lot more than $200 for this figure because I, I, I wanted it, and I do not regret my purchase whatsoever. I absolutely love this figure. I yes, I I it was worth every penny in my opinion. But I absolutely love this character, and I love this TV show. Kill a Kill is my favorite show of all time. I know I've said that countless times, but this show is has got so many great memories with it. The first time I watched the show, it legitimately blew my mind. I love the characters. I love the story. I love the plot twist. I fucking love the soundtrack oh my fucking god the soundtrack in this show this is it's it's such an immaculate show if you want to know more about my thoughts on the show as a whole and, and how much i love the show i literally made an entire video on it uh it's called kill a kill a genuine masterpiece so if you want to if you want to if you want to know more about that that video is available on my channel but I absolutely fucking adore this figure. I I am 100% satisfied with my purchase. I would not change anything. I love it so much. But you, before you buy this and before you spend all that money, you need to know what you're gonna get here. So if you are near, if you're as big a Ryuko fan as I am, 100%. The price doesn't matter. It is a fantastic representation of this absolutely fantastic character, and I have. If that's the case, then you pay. Then it's all a matter use your best judgment that, there you go that's a good way of saying this use your best judgment if you want this figure bad enough the price doesn't matter and that's legitimately how i feel now like i already said if i were to give this a personal rating it would be 10 out of 10 just because i love ryuko that much but if i gave this an actual if i if i actually gave this figure a rating based on the price that you will probably have to pay to get it i would probably give it about a 7 out of 10 it's got it's got a couple flaws here and there and like the posability is the biggest flaw because you can't really get that many really cool poses you're really stuck with her in kind of a more static pose and i really also i can't believe i forgot to uh, to bring this up until now the 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 eye changing gimmick is so cool and so smart i really love that gimmick and uh, and yeah, it's a, it's a really really cool gimmick. So you really need to weigh your to 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 do a, to to dig deep and know if you want this or not. And you know how and the price that you are gonna pay for it is obviously what is obviously going to uh, have a huge factor in that. So. Yeah, I know this was a very long opinion. I probably confused a lot of you. Are probably out there are like, "What on earth is this guy talking about?" But uh, hopefully, I got what I was trying to say across well enough. But uh, I absolutely love this figure, and it's probably one of my favorite figures in my collection at the moment, just because I love this character to no end, and I love her story, and I love everything about her. And uh, yeah. <laughs> There you go. Finally, that that is that was that's the longest verdict I have ever given on a figure review. Holy crap. But there you have it, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And this is DK Guillotine, uh, signing out.